Welcome to the first of our Daily Thought videos. Um, just to explain a wee bit about the idea behind these, I think it can be really hard uh, when we lose the structure and uh, shape of our daily life just to keep the regular routines in place. And I thought a wee video each day might just help us all uh, to keep going with our daily Bible reading. It's really important to say that this video is in no way uh, a replacement for your daily Bible reading. It's essential that we continue to spend time in God's Word, even when our normal structures and situation is completely different. Um, if you haven't yet read uh, your uh, Bible reading for today in the church reading plan, I'd encourage you to stop the video right now and go and do that. Today's passage, as you'll have seen, was uh, Exodus chapter 34 and John uh, chapter 13. So please do, if you haven't read it, stop it. Stop this video and go and read that. So I'm not going to go through all of the two chapters, I'm just going to uh, look at a few verses from one of the, the passages and the, the bit I'm going to look at is in John 13 uh, verses 6 to 8. Now before we read those verses, I wanted just to tell you a little of the context of what's going on uh, in this passage at this time and uh, simply, it's Jesus, less than 24 hours before his crucifixion, uh, with his disciples in the upper room, and after they've finished a meal, Jesus begins to go round and wash his disciples' feet. He strips to the waist, he puts a towel round his waist, and he starts to wash his disciples' feet, doing the lowest, most menial task that could be done uh, in Israel at the time. And as he moves round the room, I want you to imagine that Jesus is moving round the room towards you, that you're sitting in a circle and Jesus is moving towards you. I wonder what you would have been thinking at that moment as Jesus moves towards you, washing people's feet. Jesus, your master, your Lord, the Son of God, the Messiah, moving round towards you to wash your feet. What would you be feeling? And in John chapter 13, we get a focus on what Peter was thinking and how he responded. And so if you've got a Bible there, then you can look with me or listen. In verse 6 it says, He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. As Jesus comes round washing the disciples' feet, Peter thinks, there's no way that Jesus can wash my feet. He is far too important, far too uh, superior to me that he could wash my feet. It should be the other way around. And he thinks that he's been humble in saying to Jesus, no, you shall never wash my feet. But Jesus replies with this, odd sentences. He says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless Jesus serves Peter, he has no part with Jesus. And it's a very odd thing for Jesus to say because in the context of what's going on in that room, it's like Jesus saying, unless I serve you now by washing your feet, you're sacked, Peter. You're no longer a disciple. But actually that points to the fact that what Jesus is doing as he washes the disciples' feet is is pointing forward to something else that Jesus is going to do. That Jesus isn't just going to wash the disciples' feet, but that in less than 24 hours, Jesus is going to die on the cross to wash his disciples clean of their sin. That's the focus. That's what he's trying to communicate through this foot washing. He said to his disciples, you do not understand now what I am doing, but in time you will understand. You'll know what this is about. And so as Peter says, I don't want you to wash me, Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless I wash you clean of your sin, you're not joined to me. Unless you put your faith in me to wash you, then you're not one of mine. And that then communicates to us today and says, unless you allow Jesus to wash you, you have no part with him. Unless you allow him to cleanse you of your sin, you have no part with him. And we can often hear people proudly saying, I don't want Jesus to die for my sin. I don't want him to pay the penalty for my sin. I'll die 
for my own sin, thank you. And it sounds almost humble to want to take the punishment for your own transgressions. Actually, it's the proudest thing ever. It's saying, no, I won't allow Jesus to serve me in the way that he wants to serve me. So there's a stern warning in that for us. The stern warning is, unless Jesus washes you, you have no part with him. But secondly, there's a great encouragement. Because allowing Jesus to wash you is not a difficult thing to do. In fact, it's not really a thing to do at all. It's something which you allow Jesus to do for you, to you. To allow him to wash you clean of your sin. It's a passive accepting of his work on your behalf. It's not something we do, it's something we receive. And today that those verses help me to pray, first of all, just by giving thanks for what Jesus has done for me. Giving thanks that he died so that I could be washed clean, so that I could be forgiven before God and come to God holy and blameless and washed clean, joined to Jesus through his work for me on the cross. And secondly, it helped me to pray, to pray for my friends and my family, that they too would come to Jesus, to allow him to wash them, that they would be made clean and brought into his family. So now I would like you just to spend some time yourself praying, pray about all the things that you uh, read yourself, the things that God said to you yourself as you uh, read the Bible this morning. Think about the things that we've just thought about in verses 6 to 8 of, of John 13. Spend time praying and meditating on them. And then, uh, as with all of our videos, I encourage you just to, to phone someone else in the church, uh, phone a Christian friend and talk about uh, the things that you have read in the Bible today. And after you've talked, pray with them. Because we're not able to meet with one another, it's so important that we spend time on the phone uh, ministering to one another. So I hope this has been helpful and um, you can give me feedback if it's 